Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. And this is our latest 2023-24 AZ104 exam preparation series with real exam questions and answers. Lot of Microsoft documentation, answer validation, and of course Azure concepts, everything in this supercharged video. So let's get started. Question number 31, part 6. Question says that you have an Azure virtual machine that has a single data disk. Now you have been tasked with attaching this data disk to another virtual machine. Now you need to make sure that your strategy allows the virtual machines to be offline for the least amount of time possible. Which of the following is the action you should take first? And your options are stop the virtual machine that includes the data disk. Option B stop the virtual machine that the data disk must be attached to. Option C is detach the data disk and lastly delete the virtual machine that includes the data disk. Now friends, many online dumps are suggesting that you need to stop the virtual machine and then detach the data disk and then attach this data disk to another virtual machine. But this is not needed. Of course, you can do it, but this won't be the most optimal way. There is another way and that is you can simply detach a data disk from one virtual machine and attach this data disk to another virtual machine without stopping either of the virtual machines. And that's why according to me, option C, detach the data disk is the correct answer. Now let me show you some Microsoft documentation to validate this answer. Okay, so this is the documentation which says how to detach a data disk from a Windows virtual machine. Now I will not read the entire documentation, but let's validate the answer. So I will just read the relevant section. Here you can see that it's written that you can hot remove a data disk using PowerShell, but make sure nothing is actively using the disk before detaching from a virtual machine. So do you understand the concept here? The concept simply is that you can remove the data disk from a virtual machine hot and live but the only thing you have to take care is that nothing is actively using that data disk. Once it is made sure, you can actually remove the data disk and attach it to another virtual machine. So that's why option C, detach the data disk is the correct answer. But in case my friends you think otherwise, let me know in the comment section and we can surely have a discussion there. Let's move on to the question number 32. Question says that your company wants to have some post deployment configuration and automation tasks on Azure virtual machine. Now as a solution, as an administrator, you suggest to use configuration.ini. Does this meet the goal? So you have to basically tell that whether this solution given here is meeting the business needs, yes or no. And the correct answer for this question is no. And I have one more variation of the same question. Let me show you. So here it comes. Question number 33. Question exactly is the same. But the solution this time is that as an administrator, you suggested the use of virtual machine extension. Does this meet the goal? Yes and no. And this time, my friends, this is the correct solution. And yes, in the last episode, episode 5, I showed the first variation of this question and promised to reveal the correct answer in this part. So here it is. Azure Virtual Machine Extensions is the correct answer. Now let me validate the answer as we always do. So this is the documentation that will help us validate the answer. Here you can read virtual machine extensions and the features for Linux. And in the very first paragraph, you can read that Azure virtual machine extensions are small applications that provide post deployment configuration and automation tasks on Azure virtual machine. For example, if a virtual machine requires software installation, antivirus protection or the ability to run a script inside it, you can use Azure virtual machine extensions. So the validation of the question comes from this line post deployment configuration and automation task. And that's exactly given in the question as well. That's why Azure virtual machine extensions is the correct answer. And friends, in case you're liking the video so far, please consider giving this video a thumbs up and give us a chance to expand and reach and help more cloud learners. And with that, let's move on to the next question. Question number 34. Question says that you have an Azure subscription that contains multiple virtual machines in the best US Azure region. Now you need to use traffic analytics in Azure Network Watcher to monitor virtual machine traffic. Which two resources should you create? And please remember each correct answer presents the part of the solution and each correct selection is worth one point. Let's read the options given. Option A is a data collection rule or OCR in Azure Monitor. And option B is a log analytics workspace. Option C is an Azure Monitor workbook 
ऑप्शन डी अ स्टोरेज अकाउंट एंड लास्टली ऑप्शन ई अ नेटवर्क वॉचर इनेबल्ड सब्सक्रिप्शन सो लेट्स चेक आउट द फर्स्ट करेक्ट ऑप्शन एंड दैट इज ऑप्शन बी अ लॉग एनालिटिक्स वर्क स्पेस एंड द सेकंड करेक्ट ऑप्शन इज ऑप्शन ई अ नेटवर्क वॉचर इनेबल्ड सब्सक्रिप्शन एंड फ्रेंड्स इफ यू रियली ट्राई एंड अंडरस्टैंड दिस क्वेश्चन वन थिंग इज वेरी क्लियर दैट वी वांट टू इंप्लीमेंट ट्रैफिक एनालिटिक्स इन एजूर नेटवर्क वॉचर सो वी वांट टू पिक द रिसोर्सेज दैट शुड बी क्रिएटेड फॉर दिस इंप्लीमेंटेशन सो एक्चुअली वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द प्री रिक्वेस्ट of the same so let's briefly understand what is traffic analytics so let's first start with the overview on traffic analytics here you can see the traffic analytics is a cloud based solution that provides visibility into user and application activity in your cloud network and why exactly you need traffic analytics well for the simple reason you want to monitor and manage your network and you want to make sure there is no uncompromised security and compliance and performance issues and this is where traffic analytics comes into the picture you can read all the documentation but as i said we are talking about the prerequisite of the same so let's get to the prerequisite section so here is the prerequisite section here you can read that traffic analytics requires the following prerequisites so let's read them out first one is a network watch up the second one is an sg flow and the third one is an azure log analytics workspace and lastly you can also read what are the building rules or the access you would need to implement azure traffic analytics here you can read and understand what are the rules that you would need to implement this one so for example you would need either owner or contributor or maybe network contributor or lastly monitoring contributor to implement traffic analytics in azure network watch up and why should you do that well to monitor virtual machine traffic i hope you understood the concept of traffic analytics and what are the prerequisites and yes links to all the documentation that i'm referring in this video is shared in the description box now let's move on to the question number 35 Question says that you have an Azure subscription. Now the users access the resources in the subscription from either their home or from the customer sites. Now from the home, the users must establish point to site VPN to access Azure resources, and the users on the customer site access the Azure resources by using site to site VPN. Here you can see I have underlined the very important keywords in this question. Moving on, the question says that you have a line of business app name app one. that runs on several azure virtual machines the virtual machines run on windows server 2016 and you need to ensure that all the connections to the app 1 are spread across all the virtual machine what are the two possible azure services that you can use and your options are option a an internal load balancer option b a public load balancer option c an azure content delivery network or better known as cdn and option d is traffic manager and lastly an azure application gateway so what's the correct answer according to you it's a lengthy question read the question once again but let me tell you or take you through the important points so here most important keywords are point to site vpn and site to site vpn so in both these cases my friends one thing is very clear that we are talking about virtual private network which is a kind of internal or private network and that's why the first correct answer would be option a an internal load balancer and the second correct option would be an azure application gateway so let me give you the reasoning behind both the options firstly an internal load balancer i have already given you the logic that we are talking about point to site vpn and site to site vpn both are internal that's why internal load balancer now coming to azure application gateway why exactly is this needed well because it provides load balancing in addition to routing and security functions now let's understand why other options are not needed first coming to the public load balancer well as i just mentioned in the question it's very specifically called out that we are talking about point to site vpn or site to site vpn both are private that's why public load balancer is not needed and what about azure content delivery network well azure content delivery network or better known as cdn does not provide a load balancing for any application so it's not relevant for this situation what about the traffic manager well traffic manager is a dns based solution to direct the user request to nearest instance and does not provide any load balancing functionality that's why azure traffic manager is also not the correct option okay so next we have question number 36 question says that you have an azure subscription with 100 azure virtual machines now you need to quickly identify the underutilized virtual machines that can have their service tier change to a less expensive offering which blade should you use your options are option a monitor option b advisor option c matrices and option d customer insights 
So exactly the situation is that you have loads of Azure virtual machine and you just need to identify which are the virtual machines that you're not able to fully utilize or are underutilized. And then you can move these kind of virtual machines to a less expensive offering. So which Azure service, my friends, you will use to identify the underutilized virtual machines? Do you already have the correct answer? Well, the correct answer is option B, Advisor. And friends, Azure Advisor is undoubtedly one of the most important services and you will surely get some questions on this. So let's very quickly understand what exactly is Azure Advisor. Well, Azure Advisor helps you optimize and reduce your overall Azure spend by identifying idle and underutilized resources. And what are the recommendations that you can see on Azure Advisor in order to save costs? Well, to begin with, we have shutdown recommendations. And in these kind of recommendations, you can identify all the resources that have not been used for last seven days and make recommendations to shut them out. And that's how you can save costs. Moving on, we also have other type of recommendations for example resize SQ recommendations and in these kind of recommendations Azure Advisor recommends resizing of the virtual machine when it's possible to fit the current load on more appropriate SKUs which essentially means that you can move your Azure virtual machine to a less expensive SKU and similarly my friends you can get the recommendations on other front as well I will leave the documentation in the description box read the documentation whenever your time permits but as I just said Azure Advisor is a very important service so don't miss it out but for now let's move on to the question number 37 question says that you have an azure virtual machine named vm1 and an azure keyboard named bot1 now friends on this virtual machine one you plan to configure azure disk encryption to use key encryption key now you need to prepare vault for azure disk encryption which two actions should you perform on the vault one and your options are option a create a new key option b select azure virtual machines for deployment and option c configure a key rotation policy and option d create a new secret and lastly option e select azure disk encryption for volume encryption and friends in order to prepare an azure keyboard to use azure disk encryption you would need a key inside the keyboard and it is this key which is known as key encryption key and this creation process is nothing but the option a create a new key so that's why this is the first correct option and the second correct option is option C configure a key rotation policy and in case you want to understand what is Azure disk encryption this is the documentation here you can very well read that Azure disk encryption helps protect and safeguard your data to meet the organizational security and compliance commitments and the link to the documentation is right there in the description box and friends I have a very similar question to the previous one question number 38 let me read it out but you also read it very carefully and let me know in the comment section whether you were able to figure out the difference between both the question before I reveal the same so let's read the question question says that you have an Azure virtual machine named VM1 now you plan to encrypt virtual machine one by using Azure disk encryption which Azure resource must you create first? Your options are option A, an Azure storage account, option B, an Azure keyboard, option C, an Azure information protection policy, and option D, an encryption key. So are you able to catch the difference between both the question? Well, let me help you out. But first, let's check out the correct answer. The correct answer is option B and Azure Key Vault. So in the previous question, Key Vault was already created. But in this question, Key Vault is missing. And that's why it becomes imperative to first create the Key Vault and then move ahead. Question number 39 question says that your company has three virtual machines that are included in an availability set. Now you try to resize one of the virtual machines which returns an allocation failure message. It's imperative that the virtual machine is resized. Which of the following actions should you take? Your options. Option A. You should only stop one of the virtual machines. Option B. You should stop two virtual machines. Option C. You should stop all the three virtual machines. And lastly, you should remove the necessary virtual machine from the availability set. And the correct answer for this question is option C. You should stop all the three virtual machines. Now listen to this very carefully my friends. If the virtual machine that you want to resize is part of an availability set, then you must stop all the virtual machines in that availability set before you change the size of any virtual machine in that particular availability set. However, if the 
question says that this is a standalone virtual machine or the virtual machine is not part of any availability set then you can easily resize the particular virtual machine without impacting any other virtual machine and yes i took a very interesting related question in part 3 do check out the question number 9 of part 3 to understand related concept of virtual machine now let's move on question number 40 says that you have an azure virtual machine named vm1 that runs on windows server 2019 the virtual machine was deployed using default drive settings. You sign in to the virtual machine as a user named user1 and perform the following actions. What are the actions? So firstly, you create the files on drive C. Then you create files on drive D. You also modify the screen saver timeout. And lastly, you also change the desktop background. Now you also plan to redeploy the virtual machine 1. Which changes will be lost after you redeploy the virtual machine 1? Options are Option A, the modified screen saver timeout. Option B, the new desktop background. Option C, the new files in the drive D. And lastly, the option D, the new files in drive C. And the correct answer is option C, the new files on drive D. And this documentation titled as redeploy Windows Virtual Machine to new Azure node will help us validate the answer. So let me take you to the relevant section. So here you can read under the warning section that after you redeploy a virtual machine, all the data that you save on the temporary disk and the ephemeral disk is lost. The dynamic IP addresses associated with the virtual network interface are updated. So that's why my friends, once you redeploy the virtual machines, all the files on the drive D will be lost. So those were the 10 latest questions on AZ104. If you truly think that you learned something in Azure and feeling more confident for the exam, please give this video a thumbs up. It really motivates us. And yes, my friends, in case you are here for the first time, please do not forget to subscribe to the channel and press that bell icon as we bring multiple videos and shots each week to enhance your career in both Azure and AWS. And that's all for today. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.